New Ford GT Supercar, first production car rolls off assembly line. Ford's new GT Supercar may be sold out, but the first lucky customer will get their hands on one very soon. The first production model of the all-new Ford GT has rolled off the assembly line and is heading to an excited customer. The first car rolling off the line marks the start of the all-new supercar's production run. The Ford GT will be built over a span of four years, with production having been extended due to huge demand. Originally just 500 examples of the Ford GT were set to be built, which meant that a lot of interested customers would miss out. With the production length now doubled, it's expected another 500 lucky punters, meticulously selected by Ford, of course, will be able to update their applications to buy one. The decision comes on the back of a commitment by Ford Performance to race the GT in both the IMSA and WEC, World Endurance Championship, series for four years. Dave Perikak, Global Director of Ford Performance, says while we can't build enough Ford GTS for everyone who has applied, we are going to produce additional vehicles in an effort to satisfy more of our most loyal Ford ambassadors. Year 3 of production will support those who were already sat on the existing waiting list, while applications will open for Year 4's allowance in early 2018. Following its LE Mans class win, Ford will be offering the first year's production with an optional LE Mans heritage color scheme. Not the new 2016 racing colors though, but the black and silver striped paint job from the awesome Ford GT40 which won LE Mans in 1966. In addition, Ford has revealed the new GT will be available in 8 bright colors, as well as various themes that aim to coordinate things like the interior and racing stripes. Personalization is key, though with owners offered the chance to upgrade items such as the brake calipers which are available in silver, blue, orange and red. Ford design manager Barb Whalen said, We walked a fine line with the color and materials in this vehicle infusing energy through use of color and balance while working to ensure the raw appeal of a performance car still shines through. Everything in the all-new Ford GT was intentionally designed to express ultimate performance. Carbon fiber will feature heavily both inside and out serving as a visual anchor of the car's light white construction. Buyers will be able to spec gloss, matte or shadow black paint for the exposed carbon fiber parts dotted around the cabin. The order books for the Ford GT were originally opened and closed in just a few weeks earlier this year, when Ford received more than 6,500 applications from would-be owners. There are 500 UK applicants on the list so far, but that's likely to change now. However, we do know that purchasers of the last four GT will be bumped to the top of the list. We want to prioritize people who are going to care about the car, keep the car, and drive the car, the company says. The four GT was revealed at the Detroit show in January 2015, and made its European show debut at Geneva in March the same year. Despite order books being full, there's no official word on when UK deliveries will begin, although mid-2017 seems likely. With 600 BHP, stunning aero-inspired looks and a £300,000 price tag, it's no surprise that there are so many would-be buyers. Read on for more details about the amazing new Ford supercar. Ford GT, Design Secrets we went behind the scenes at Ford's HQ in Dearborn, Michigan to learn more about how the new Ford GT was born, and how the brand managed to keep it under wraps for so long before its Detroit debut. The dramatic supercar will be delivered to the first US customers at the end of 2016, but it's already out on Michigan plates being put through its paces. Ford is aware there's no point in disguising now it's been seen by the world, so a vicious looking matte grey paint job is the only attempt at camouflage. That low, wedgy stance is clearer than ever amongst the SUV heavy Michigan streets, as are the enormous flying buttresses, rakish rear end and aerodynamic body slits. It's Ford's second attempt at a modern take on the retro GT40 LE Mans racer of the 1960s. We know that the new GT sports a mid-mounted twin-turbo 3.5-liter V6 EcoBoost engine, and is combined with a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox. 
The body is made primarily from carbon fiber, and Ford promises one of the best power-to-weight ratios of any production car. Ford hasn't given us a price tag yet, but it's strongly hinted at around the 300,000 pounds mark. Ford will build it in fairly limited numbers, around 250 a year, in order to preserve its exclusivity. The tale behind this reinvented American icon goes back a little further, so we visited Ford's headquarters in Dearborn, Michigan, to get the full behind-the-scenes story. The Ford GT project was so secret that it was designed by a tiny team of people, and they didn't work in one of the many studios in the vast Ford Design Center, but in a windowless basement corner room protected by a padlock. 2016 Ford GT, new from the ground up. From the beginning, the brief was to make something different to the 2005 Ford GT, which used aluminium and magnesium components and a 550bhp 5.4 liter supercharged V8. An early decision was made to construct it from lightweight carbon fiber structural and body panels, with a rear-mounted, twin-turbo 3.5-liter V6 producing more than 600bhp. This new engine couldn't be further from an old-school V8. Stephen Russ, director of Global Engine Engineering, explained that the GTCCU processes 3,000 signals from 50 sensors around the car and uses 28 microprocessors running 10 million lines of code, an F-22 military plane uses 2 million lines, and a Boeing 787 6 million. New Ford GT, a top secret program. Only a handful of people were aware of the program. These included top management, like Chief Designer Moray Callum, Exterior Design Chief Craig Metros and Global Interior Design Boss Amco Lean Arts, plus the Ford Performance Team, including Director Dave Parakak and Chief Engineer Jamal Hamidi. Standing at the entrance to the design bunker surrounded by sketches and scale models, Callum told us, this room housed one of the first mills that ever came into Ford Motor Company. We took this space, moved everything out of it and refurbished. Not only did the space have to be different, but the process had to be different, too. We mixed a couple of young designers with more experienced ones. We wanted fresh ideas from the youngsters, but knew we needed the experienced guys to get the car done in a record time of 14 months. Four GT Styling and Design Details Despite the dramatic styling details on the GT, the low stance and profile is instantly recognizable to fans of its predecessors. There's 20-inch wheels clad in Michelin Pilot Super Sport Cup tires, and the suspension is a torsion bar and pushrod setup that is height-adjustable. Carbon ceramic brakes are also standard. Callum said the team used the traditional method of doing a two-dimensional sketch of the car and moving on to scale models carved from foam using mathematical data. This lightweight foam made it easier to move the models outside to view them in natural light. Plus, he added that the ducting and venting on the body, the flying buttresses and the teardrop shape of the fuselage behind the cockpit were all tested and proven in the wind tunnel. Ford Performance Chief Engineer Hamidi talked about the breathtaking shape of the car, the tapering fuselage comes from a Formula One or an LMP1 car. They all have a taper, which sets up a very clean air path to the rear wing, and that's what we're doing here. He added that the team worked hard to not only get a low coefficient of drag, CD, but a low CDA figure, too. This is the CD multiplied by the frontal area of the car an indicator of the aero drag that must be overcome to achieve both speed and stability. One of the goals was to have a small greenhouse upper section of the body to get a world-class CDA number, Hamidi said. Air coming around the surface does not detach. It's been carefully crafted and designed to have clean laminar flow. Elizabeth Barron and her team used Ford's virtual design studio to build a complete interior and exterior of the GT from computer data that engineers and designers could get into and sit down in. There they could explore the spatial relationships in the narrow cockpit by donning a special stereo viewing helmet and using a wand and a flashlight to look at elements in detail. Amco Lean Arts, who led the interior design, said, when you have a special package, and this was a special package, engineering and design have to go hand in hand. 
In this car, there was no big center console with a big shifter, because we had to be as lean and efficient as possible. We designed it so the steering column and pedals come to the driver. Because of the hyper small space, we needed to carve out a lot of space from the dash to get a lightweight feel. When you get into the car, you get an immediate feel of raciness. All the functions are on the steering wheel. When it arrives, the 4 GT road car will be the most sophisticated, fastest, and most expensive car ever to wear the famous blue oval badge.